Hello and welcome to 90 East. In this video, we'll be looking at distance time graphs. We learned in our last video that different objects travel at different speeds and even at varying speeds during the same journey. We also learned that we can calculate the average speed that a person or object has traveled if we know two things, the distance that was traveled and the time that it took to travel that distance. We also looked at a couple of different examples where the distance and the time were given to us in numbers, but that's not the only way to represent a journey. In fact, we can represent journeys using a distance time graph. You'll remember from maths that the gradient or slope of a graph is calculated by looking at the change in the y-axis and dividing it by the change in the x-axis. If we plot distance across the y-axis and time across the x-axis, then that means that the slope or gradient will be equal to the distance that's been traveled divided by the time that it took to travel that distance. And that means that the slope or gradient will be the same as speed. And that's really the take home message for this video, that the slope or gradient of a distance time graph is equal to speed. You can see then that distance time graphs are really useful because intuitively just at a glance, you can tell which object was traveling at a faster speed than the other because the steeper the gradient, the faster the average speed. But rather than trust me on that one, let's do a few calculations just to be sure. So first we'll try to calculate the average speed of the object whose journey is represented by the red line. So we need to look at the distance that was traveled. And that is five meters. And we need to look at the time that it took, which is half a second. So it's traveling five meters in half a second. So that means that its average speed is 10 meters per second. To make the most of this video, why don't you pause here and calculate the average speed for the green, purple, and the blue lines and come back to see if you got the same answers as we do. Okay, let's get started. On the green line, we've got the distance traveled, which is four meters, and the time that it took, which is one second. So four divided by one is four meters per second. Then we've got the journey that's represented by the purple line. So the distance traveled is three and a half meters and the time that it took is one and a half plus another quarter, 1.75 seconds. 3.5 divided by 1.75 is two meters per second. And lastly, we've got the journey that's represented by the blue line, which can be trickier for some people because the distance that's traveled is actually zero meters because we can see at time equals zero, the person was standing at two meters and then two and a half seconds later, they're still standing at two meters. So the distance traveled is zero meters. The time is 2.5 seconds. So their speed is zero meters per second, which essentially just means that they're standing still. So through these calculations, we have confirmed that the steeper the gradient, the faster the speed. So just to review, the average speed of an object can be calculated by looking at the distance that was traveled and the time that it took to travel that distance. If we put that journey in a graph, the slope of the graph is equal to the average speed. But you have to remember that that's only the case if the y-axis represents distance and if time is plotted on the x-axis. Graphs are really great because it's easy to compare speeds without having to do lots of calculations because intuitively you know that the larger the gradient, the greater the speed of the object or the person. As always, there's a few different exercises that you can do in a link below in the description section. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to directly message us either through YouTube or send us an email to 9 to east tv at gmail.com. Thanks everyone.